simple lo que estamos planteando es que no hay que tener miedo porque no se desmoronan las sociedades históricamente históricamente basadas en parejas formadas por un hombre y una mujer. No pasa nada. El mundo continúa y es más, es mucho más feliz. Eh, la palabra al honorable Senizen por un minuto. To niedopuszczalne, że są w Europie kraje, w których prawa osób w związkach małżeńskich i partnerskich są zróżnicowane w zależności od orientacji seksualnej. W części państw członkowskich osoby homoseksualne nie mogą prawnie uregulować swoich związków, a związki legalnie zawarte w innych krajach nie są uznawane. W Polsce, nawet w obliczu takiej tragedii jak śmierć najbliższej osoby, jej homoseksualny partner jest traktowany niczym obywatel drugiej kategorii. Jak skończyć z przyzwoleniem na dyskryminację z powodu orientacji seksualnej, skoro nawet na tej sali zdarzają się skandaliczne, homofobiczne wypowiedzi? Ich autorzy najwyraźniej nie mają świadomości, że homofobia jako wstydliwa przypadłość powinna być leczona. Przestańmy dzielić obywateli na gorszych i lepszych. Wszystkim należą się równe prawa do zawierania legalnych związków, adopcji dzieci, pracy w każdym zawodzie, uczciwej edukacji, nieukrywania preferencji seksualnych. Do miłości, dumy i szczęścia. Dziękuję. Grazie, ci sono per ora due interventi per la procedura Catch the Eye. Eh, iniziamo con l'onorevole Zabosca, prego. Grazie, Madame Presidente, Madame la Commissaire. Ce débat démontre la manière dont l'argument de la non-discrimination fondé sur le sexe et sur l'orientation sexuelle est cumulé avec l'argument de la libre circulation des travailleurs dans un seul but. Forcer les États membres de changer fondamentalement leur tradition nationale dans le domaine du droit civil qui régit la définition de la famille. Les, les, les euh, parlements nationaux euh, respectent la vie de ces citoyens. Pour 80% des citoyens, la famille représente tout d'abord une union stable entre un homme et une femme. C'est Eurostat qui publie ces chiffres. Mais personne ne parle de ces chiffres. Si l'on parlait ouvertement du fait que la grande majorité des citoyens approuvent encore aujourd'hui les modèles familiaux fondés sur le mariage entre un homme et une femme, ce débat s'articulera autrement. Merci. Credo che l'onorevole Ladford vuole fare una domanda all'onorevole Zabosca. L'onorevole Zabosca accetta? Um, I would just like to ask um, Mrs. Zaborska whether she accepts that we're not talking about forcing member states to change their marriage laws. What we're talking about is obliging them to recognise the products of other countries' laws on partnership and marriage. That is a fundamental difference. It's about implementing the principle of mutual recognition. And I'd ask other speakers who have expressed somewhat similar sentiments to accept that we do now have this well-developed mutual recognition principle in many areas of EU life and competence. And in the area of non-discrimination and free movement, that is the route to go. But it is not about forcing member states to change their own marriage laws. Simply recognise other countries' marriage laws. Oui, merci beaucoup pour, pour la question. Euh, je, je réponds volontairement. Euh, euh, Peut-être que ce n'est pas le changement de la cote familiale, de la législation familiale du d'État, mais c'est le changement de la cote civile. C'est le changement des droits civils qui, euh, qui doit être changé dans, dans cet État. Et, euh, 
euh, il y a des changements euh, de, de, euh, avec les grandes lois, mais il y a des changements avec des, euh, des règlements euh, du gouvernement. Mais le, le gouvernement et le Parlement doivent respecter la vie des citoyens aussi dans des, euh, dans des, euh, des actes législatifs qui ne sont pas euh, tout à fait le droit, euh, la législation familiale. Grazie. La parola all'onorevole Sinclair. Thank you, uh, Madam, <coughs> Madam Chairman. I wasn't expecting to speak tonight. I had no intention to speak, and I don't have a prepared speak, uh, speech, but I thought I would say a few words. As an openly gay person, I think it's the right of everyone to love who they want to love and to live the life they wish to live, whoever that may be with. What has been confirmed here tonight, how right I was to leave the EFD group and their fascistic uh, views, for example, from the Italian group, and their views which, come, which are something like 19th century. I mean, I remind this, this chamber that their mayor, Treviso, said that homosexuals should be ethnically cleansed from, from their city. As an openly gay person, as an openly gay politician, I've sometimes been a bit afraid to campaign for what I believe in in re regards to equal rights for gay people is because I don't wish to be typecast. I wish to campaign for what I, wish to be what I believe in. And that surely is a discrimination that still affects our member states. Of course, if people join the European Union, there's been many referendums of, of a, a set, uh, when people have acceded to the European Union, therefore they've acceded to these rights, which is, everyone knows that I'm a believer in the member state, but as Ms. Invelt said, this is beyond a member state. This is about fundamental human rights. And I think if you allow a country to join the European Union, as much as I'm opposed to it, they must accede to their rights. So when will you enforce these rights? Are we equal or are we not? Thank you. E onorevole Intveld, lei voleva intervenire per il calcio di AI? Prego. Yes, thank you, Chair. Very briefly, I would like to put a question to uh, my Italian colleague, and I apologize for not knowing your name. But you asked that other member states, yes, you, accept the sensitivities of your country. But this debate is not ex about accepting sensitivities of other countries, it's about accepting laws of other countries. And I would like to know if you are willing to recognize the laws of other EU member states. Thank you. Ma basta rispondere con la decisione del 2008 della Corte di Giustizia che va perfettamente contro a quello che lei ha affermato e, ci ha, e ha dato al, ai Paesi, ai Paesi membri, la possibilità in questi ambiti di poter legiferare e di non poter in qualche modo rispettare i dibattiti come questo. Quindi io mi attengo alla delibera del 2008 della Corte di Giustizia. Io mi attengo alla delibera della Corte di Giustizia del 2008. Grazie. Diamo adesso la parola al Commissario Reding per le conclusioni. Prego. Conclusions, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, for me it's easy, actually, because the law is very clear. It's about non-discrimination, right to free movement and mutual recognition. Uh, Let me stress this. If you live in a legally recognized same-sex partnership or marriage in a country A, you have the right, and that is a fundamental right, to take this status and the one of your partner to the country B. Mm -hmm. If not, well, it is a violation of EU law. So there, there is no discussion about this. This is absolutely uh, clear, and we do not have to hesitate on this. Uh, this is a law today, and you can count on me that I will help you to enforce this. So 
Yeah, but wait, wait. That is the law. Now, the reality uh, sur le terrain, I mean, in real terms, might be different. And we have to change this reality. And that is the reason why I have said that uh, we have these bilateral meetings at a technical level with member states in order to see how we can change uh, their way of applying something which is very clear in legal terms. And permit me there uh, not to agree with uh, Baroness Ludford. We normally do agree in our analysis, but here, no. Uh, the Directive on Free Movement does not give to the Member States a discretion to discriminate. And no EU directive does. And we should not allow a mythology uh, being developed saying that actually it is possible uh, to discriminate. But we have to be very firm on the principles. And I think that, that there we agree again, uh, don't we? So, <laughs> yes, all right. Uh, so for me, it's no discussion about the basis of what is our legal system and how it has to be interpreted. We will try to have this applied everywhere in the same way that it is written down. And here you find me on your side. Now there was a question, when is this going to happen? Now. Uh, not, not in five or ten years. I don't know about the change of the mentality in the different member states. I can just tell you about the experience which I have as a politician over so many decades. Sometimes the governments are more cautious than their populations. And it has been said by personal experiences in this uh, chamber. Uh, sometimes the population react in a very natural, relaxed way, and the government thinks that there is a very big problem. Now, what I try to do is to bring the governments to understand that. If there is no understanding, then more harsh measures have to be applied. Grazie Commissario, la discussione è chiusa. Ora l'ordine del giorno reca l'interrogazione orale alla Commissione sull'assistenza a lungo termine per le persone anziane.